Okay, on my decluttering journey, I have gotten rid of a no longer needed knee brace and this little doohickey here, the thigh master, and a bunch of homeschool books. Um, and then I've got 10 more items out of my closet. I'm working on my closet a bit. And then the next day, um, a ton, maybe 40 pieces of homeschool books that are no longer needed. And then the kids discovered a beautiful rainbow after a um, monsoon. And I think this is a little bit of a double rainbow. You can see a little bit right there. It's just a really nice thing to see. Look at that. All right, and I'm just relaxing here with this book that I'm reading here. Um, I got it from the library, but I think I'm going to purchase it. It's called Mommy, You're Enough, and it's written by a wonderful therapist, uh, psychologist, who um, kind of walks you through all of the many different uh, feelings that you have as a mom, sometimes being overwhelmed and how to handle those feelings. Really enjoying this book. Hi guys, it is Sunday evening and um, I thought I'd take a minute to chat with you for a second. I have been um, very diligently getting rid of my unwanted stuff and I cleaned out the homeschool stuff and so I have a lot more than I should have on one day um, as far as like giveaway stuff but I have at least 10 items every day so I am going to be donating all of my items once at the end of the week and I'm going to take it to my favorite thrift store not more than once <laughs> just because of the gas and the temptation to go inside because I love browsing in my favorite place but I don't want to go there every time I donate because then I'm just going to bring back home more stuff right and that's counterintuitive to what I'm trying to do here but what's really tempting is that every time I donate, they give me a 20% coupon for the next visit. And so what in the past I've done was I've donated, taken the coupon, walked right inside and go get more stuff. So I really wanna try not to do that. Um, and I'm not saying that I'm, it's my favorite place. So I, I'm not gonna never go in there, but I'll probably go like once a month. So that's it, I'm gonna be, yeah, I'll, I'll just say I'll go in once a month and that's my once a month visit and I'm not allowed to go back in any other time. The thought occurred to me, why do I like this thrift store more than any other one? Number one, it's kind of set up like a department store and it's a really nice place, place to browse. They're always changing their inventory um, and you can find some really cool stuff. But number two, I love, or I love the causes that they donate to. And the number one, um, cause that they support is the women and children's shelter um, either here in town or across the board wherever and i think that really hits a soft spot with me um, i didn't know why until i thought about this but then i thought wow okay probably because i have some sort of a, a connection there um, i actually lived in a women's shelter for a little time and this was before i met my husband um, but it was many many years ago and um, and now i'm gonna bring up a little bit from my past, but I want you to know in doing that, I am not disrespecting or dishonoring my parents in any way whatsoever. I love my parents. My mom is now no longer with us, but um, people are have real lives and sometimes people have real struggles. And so there's, I forgive them and I hope they've forgiven me for being uh, kind of a sassy daughter growing up here and there, but, um, but you know, they've had their own struggles my dad with alcohol and my mom with mental illness and um, my mom's illness well both of them got very very bad at one point and so when that happens in a family it can create a very dysfunctional environment that is really harmful to uh, children growing up in that environment and a family relating to each other in that environment and so with my mom um, way back then, this was in the 80s, there, I want to say the very early 80s, the, um, the mental health was really lacking, the care, and the therapeutic medicines were not what they are today. Today, they have a lot of choices 
um, to use to help people that will help them be pretty stable. Um, in her later years, they really dialed into some good medicines that kept her on a very even uh, plane. She was able to even uh, go back to school and finish her college degree. She volunteered um, until, you know, up until the time she couldn't anymore, and she worked and she helped others. <clears throat> but during this time of her mental illness, when it, which she struggled with for years, but in the, you know, during this time, it was, I want to say it was probably the worst years ever. She didn't even, I mean, she had points of time where she just blacked out. She didn't know what she was saying or doing due to the medications that they had her on. And um, one of the side effects of that is that she would become, with some of them, extremely aggressive. And um, so I did suffer a lot of um, abuse between the both of us um, at her hands. And um, I wanted to honor my parents so I never would fight back or anything like that and she didn't remember a lot of those times so I of course I've forgiven her it's just you know she needed help she needed medical care and she needed um you know help and it really wasn't there the way that it was handled is they would over medicate her and either she would be up flying around you know doing bizarre stuff or she would be laid out on the couch and my poor mom just couldn't you know find you know the middle of the road they couldn't they couldn't do that with her and so when it would get really really bad um what they would do is just sign her into a mental mental institution for about a month and then of course you know we all had to pull together at home but it was at the same time even though it was harder it seemed like um, on one end because we were all doing so much work on the other end um it was there was a lot of peace in the house because mom wasn't there in her state and there wasn't anything to fear on that end right and it seemed like during that time since my mom wasn't there dad would kind of ease up on the alcohol because we needed a parent and so he'd kind of like back off of that and try his best you know so it was a really difficult time and this was a really really hard decision for me at the time because um, our family even though we had all of these issues I did not want to, you know, leave them. I knew that I was helping. I had younger brothers and sisters and I was there to help them while I was there and they needed the help. But I was going to start college. I was set to start college and I knew that I could not start college and live in that much of a dysfunctional environment and focus on moving ahead. So I made the very difficult decision at some point to leave the house. That's something that would not have been okay with my parents in any way, shape, or form, especially with my dad. Um, and yes, there would have been uh, more abuse coming my way had he known that. Uh, so what I ended up having to do was basically uh, sneak out of the house. I had a friend uh, meet me down the street and she gave me a ride after I got everything all set up with the women's shelter. Um, I had all my belongings in a cardboard box and I threw them out the back window, went around the house and met her down the street and um, she dropped me off at the shelter. Um, it was the only place that I could go. I did not want to live with anybody else. I wanted to start my life and I was not interested in living under a bridge somewhere. I knew that I needed help from some sort of authority that uh, or an entity that could help me do that and I ended up depending on the women's shelter for that. Um, and of course, you know, there was a long road of struggling with communication with family after that, which we ended up being able to bridge the gap and I ended up being able to go home and meet with my parents again. But that wouldn't happen for maybe another year. Um, but in any case, I was there at the women's shelter and um, it was, yeah, it was shocking at first because I'd never been introduced to this world. Um, but to tell you the truth, from the state that I was living in and as dysfunctional as it was at the time, it was a a big breath of fresh air to, even with strangers that you didn't know, to live somewhere that you felt that it was safe um, for once. And to be able to sleep at night, I probably had the best rest that I'd had in a long time. And uh, they were very secretive. 
you couldn't tell anybody where the house was. It wasn't like an institutionalized house like many places are now. It was just like a four bedroom house that was hidden in a neighborhood and nobody knew it was a women and children's shelter. And um, so they only had so many beds so you could stay so long, which I think they still have a time limit for you to stay there. Um, and of course you have different chores and jobs and everybody pulls their weight around there. Um, and they do their very best to help you since you're only there for a certain amount of time to help you get started somewhere else and have a new life somewhere. So they will help you find a job or a place to live or, or, or push you in the direction of how to figure that out. And so with me, they helped me as well. Um, and so I ended up having their guidance into going to rent a room from a lady who had um, just rooms to rent for women. It was just like, um, you know, I, so I springboarded from there to another place that was able to help me out that I could actually rent from. Uh, but at the shelter, I saw and met people that yeah, I probably wouldn't have otherwise. Um, there was one night, I remember there was a curfew of nine o'clock or so, and I think they stayed open a little while more for her or they let her come in because she was a woman. Now I was in the Central Valley and she had hitchhiked all the way from Washington up north to the Central Valley. And when she arrived, she was really, and she was messed up and beat up and she had a shirt and um and underwear and that was it she had no pants she had no shoes no socks no purse no bag no nothing and um so she basically like escaped with her life you know wherever and she was so messed up and in shock that night but over the next um week or so or two weeks i she was so happily wanting to do all the chores. She was just so grateful to be somewhere safe. And with the people that I met there, I saw, including myself, I saw this peace and happiness come over them and contentment, I wanna say, that even though they didn't know where they were going and they didn't know what their future held, they didn't have any money, <laughs> they didn't have anything, they knew because their circumstances were so bad that just being in a place that they felt safe meant the world to them. Everything was okay for today and they had not known that feeling for a long time and including me. And so, um, although I think that a lot of people had it a lot worse even, but um, in any case, um, then there was another woman who came in. She had three children. I think she had a car at the time and um, that was all she had. She ended up having it set up where she could go to stay with her sister for a while. And I hope she never went back to her <clears throat> bad situation, but sometimes that does happen. Um, but at first she and her children were kind of reserved and you know unsure. And then I could see after a while they were very happy and very glad because they all knew that they were going to be safe. So um, even the person who was the house mother, so to speak, the one that was in charge of the whole place, she was there and got involved because she was in a very abusive relationship. So she knew how important it was to work with women in this situation. And um, for me, I, you know, it still holds a very special place in my heart. Um, so because of that, and I actually had forgotten about that time. Um, I ended up leaving there and starting college and starting my life. And then I ended up meeting my husband in college and we um, dated for a couple years before we decided to get married. And so um, my life has been extremely blessed through him. And, you know, from then on, and it's just, I have, I, so I still have that soft spot for this place that was kind of like an oasis in the desert. And um, so if you see a woman in sh children's shelter in your town or something, you know, give a bag of clothes or whatever to support them and stuff. It really is important because like the lady that came in from Washington, um, she had no clothes. She, the only clothes that she wore were the ones that were donated and those she accepted with a full and grateful heart. So um, one of the things that the Bible says is um, that the, Jesus had said this at one time, that true religion is looking after the orphans and the widows. So it really makes a big difference. But anyway, um, I just wanted to share that little memory with you guys. And I hope you have a very wonderful and blessed day. I'll see you next time. Love you.